and that sucks. <clears throat> it cut it off, but that's okay. We have broken extended remix on. I don't really know what to say today, guys. I'm just feeling like a big old box of chocolates. Like, even on days that I don't feel good, which is a lot of them, I still get up and do what I'm supposed to do. Oh, I do have my U of M. doctor's appointment coming up, which is good. My rheumatology department finally called, they called me today to set up my appointment so I can go and I can figure out what's happening with my lungs and my body and my organs. Because I'm tired, guys. I'm very tired. Just not feeling very well lately. But I get up every morning. I give it my all. I work to the absolute capacity of what I can work towards. And I know that there's a better future in store. I know that I will be moving soon. I know that I will be in sunny places. I know that I will be around vitamin D. And I know that I will have my puppy, Waggy. Yes, and his best friend, Julie. Yes, those are their names for right now. I'm not telling you their real names yet because they're too precious to me. But that's what I want in life. And then I want babies. So when you're having rough days, just remember, you can write down all of your goals. Let's write down our goals together. I got these really nice pens from Target. They were $5.99 and they say noted and they're like their felt tip and I really like them. They're black and gold. I'm really picky about my writing utensils because they have to write smoothly so that my mind is smooth. But we're just going to put 125.23 at the top. Then we're going to put, I want to move. I want doors to open. I want and desire wealth. I would love leveling up. Legal representation. Corporations. Laboratories. Vice beauty. Life. Listening experiences. Best friends, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, why do I want this? To be successful. To look life in the eye. To spend money. To get healthy. To become greater than great. At the end of the day, I shall achieve these things. Amen. And goodbye. Now, I have now accomplished my goal for the day of writing down everything that I want to say to myself, right? And myself could mean angels, gods, demons, heart-to-hearts with other people, relationships, other factors, different spirits, guides, auras, chakras, energies, energy levels, the weather, astrology, light sources, frequencies, 
communication factors, all the different things that I know how to utilize within my life. And now I've given it to them and said, hey, I've now delegated my issues and my personal wants and responses into these types of scenarios. So this way they can be accomplished for me and not at me. And this way when they come at me, this way when they come to me and work for me, I'm already prepared for them and ready because I asked for them. And the key to the, all the laws of the universe is that you have to ask and you have to be prepared for the answer. So sometimes we answer ourselves and we get what we want, but we forgot that it was given to us because we asked for it. So if you need help at work, all you have to do is ask. If you need help at home, all you have to do is ask. If you need help from higher powers, all you have to do is ask. But by the laws of the universe, they're not allowed to step in unless something torrential happens or unless somebody invites them in. That's just the way that it works. And that's how they keep angels and demons at, at, uh, at a balance within our world. Um, there's a lot to it, like the Council of Light um, and a lot of other laws that govern the universe that I'll get into when I'm feeling inspired to do so. But this is a part two for this. And it's a lot easier when I have people asking me questions through DMs about this stuff. So please feel free to ask about that um, or ask in the comments like to expand some more on it because it gives me a little more motivation and direction to where I should go sometimes because I know so much about this stuff. I've studied it for a very long time. And I was also gracious enough one summer that God gave me the information. I just know how to do this stuff. And so it's like being able to pick up a guitar and knowing how to play all the different notes on the guitar because you asked, hey, teach me how to play guitar. You know, I don't have the resources to go and find somebody or I don't know anybody. Can you just teach me how to play? And that's kind of how music is with me is a lot of times like, <laughs> Hello, light. Um, a lot of times I just know how to do it. Granted, I listen to a lot of music. I have a lot of support from the spiritual world. I really do. Um, or these lights wouldn't be flashing at me back and forth like this. Um, they're trying to tell me something. And I'm not. Oh, there's an add on. Okay. I hear you. Is that better? That's my director over there. So the story behind this song is me and Post P were talking and we kept having dreams about each other. But I kept having these nightmares and so did he that something scary was going to happen. And so I produced a song called Baby Girl and it's one of my favorite songs. It's very like, it reminds me of Johnny Cash. And I love the story of Johnny Cash. I've, I've known the story since I was little. My dad brought us up on Johnny Cash and the Doors. And it's been a really cool experience getting back into music and producing music because This also makes me wonder if the battery is dying. If you guys have been to my Instagram, there's a really cute picture of a girl with her batteries drained. Stop shining, we gonna ride to the break of dawn. On this road, pretty mama, we are driving far away. So that is me and the baby girl picture. That's a picture that Kat Lesney did back in Atlanta. And um, I pulled it off of Tumblr when I deleted myself off the internet after being horribly harassed. Um, I found some of the pictures in one of my old Dropbox folders that I was able to pull back up and use it for a particular set of emotions that I was going through in November and December. I believe this was released in December when I released a whole bunch of music, but 
I'm debating on right now either releasing a mixtape um, or just releasing them as singles, but they're pretty, they're pretty eclectic. They're kind of all over the place, so I'm not really sure how I want to do it yet. Um, I would love some feedback from people in music. That would be pretty awesome. Um, but this song is like really heartfelt to me. It really means a lot to me. And, you know, I really did produce it for somebody that I really, really love and was going through a lot with at the time. Like I'm very scared of love. I'm very skeptical. Um, because I've just been through so many broken hearts with things and the way that I want to do things is very different than the way that a lot of people do things. And I just miss my friends that understand that. Like, it's like, I'm at my capacity of learning to love myself again. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, 2023 is here. Like where are my family at? Where are my friends at? Like, what are we doing babies? Because I got people that I want to take care of and I got things I want to do and I've got music I want to produce and I've got money I want to make. And I want to do it in such an authentic, cool way. And just like, you know, like, like living in LA with like my cool friends is different than living in LA with like my bad friends. Like I have so many different variables and factors with things. And I love to just be on the road too. I love to meet people and experience things. And I just want that one person by my side. And that's really what baby girl is about is it's about waking up to that next one, like that next one person that makes all your nightmares and your demons go away, you know? And you know, you're so scared that the person you love is going to disappear and go away that sometimes you don't even give them any of the love you deserve because you're afraid of the responses. You're afraid of the communication. You're afraid of what if they don't like what they see? What if this is the game that the internet tells us that everybody plays? What if this is that game that everybody else thinks it's going to be, you know, and then you lose that realness factor and you lose the reality behind things. And that's such a scary place to be because when you function in real life, that's not the way it is. You know, and I'm recovering from some pretty serious like phone trauma and like traumatic experiences around telephones that like I didn't have a phone for almost six months. I wouldn't touch a telephone. Like I was so scared of them and I was afraid of the communication. I was afraid that people weren't understanding me. Like I was moving at such a speed of light that it was just so overwhelming for me all the time. And I didn't have like... I had my best friend to sleep next to, but it just wasn't the same, you know, like when you grow up with boyfriends all the time and like having your own house or your own place to live together and stuff, it's different, you know, like you're building this life together and it's, it's different when you do it with your best friend. And, you know, I don't necessarily have all the tools or resources to explain that to them at this point in time, but like. I'm scared to move in with my significant other, but then at the other point, that's all I want to do at the same time. I'm scared to leave the old behind to jump into the new because I'm not out at the bars drinking right now. I'm not doing those things. And that could change at any given point in time, obviously. But like, you know, it's just such a weird, it's something that feels like it's never going to end. And I don't want to be that person that pretends that I'm okay when I'm not okay. You know, because like, I'm super positive and productive, of course, but like you can always get better. You can always be more positive. You can always be more productive. And I'm incorporating a lot more physical activity into my days to make sure that I'm, you know, increasing those dopamine receptors and I am getting better physically and mentally every single day after this huge recovery that I've gone through. And so I appreciate you guys. You know, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you DMing me. Um, I don't always get back to everyone on Facebook because I get like, sometimes I get a thousand messages on Facebook and like missed phone calls and stuff like that. So I really do my best to get back to everybody, but you know, I'm also an introvert a little bit, you know, like I like having a team of people next to me that I can ask questions about and know that I'm doing the right thing. Um, you know, and right now I have to train myself how to always do the right thing and how to always, you know, pick up the phone when there's something that I'm uncomfortable about or somebody I'm uncomfortable about, or there's a situation that doesn't feel real or right or, you know, and not everybody's right. Not everybody has the tools or resources or training 
to do the right thing. And so, you know, you really do have to diversify. I love the song. It's Manchester Orchestra, The Silence. I adore Manchester Orchestra. Absolutely adore them. I have some stuff on my Instagram about them. Um, which, I don't know how long that Instagram handle is going to stay that same name. I think it's just a temporary name at this moment. Um, but if you have issues with epilepsy, I would say probably don't watch this video because of the strobe light. That's not actually a strobe light. It's just a light that's blinking at me, um, telling me to go slow, I think. I don't know, but we're going to listen to Aftermath show. It's amazing what light does for eyeballs, huh? <laughs> Two totally different people. <laughs> Two totally different people. I've waited for so long for the Aftermath show. I would literally sit like this all day with you guys and play video games if I had the setup or if I had the internet to do it. And that is so the reality of things. But I have new music on the way. What do you guys think? Should I wait and do a mixtape? A mixtape is like 15 to 30 songs. I just don't know if I have that in me right now. Especially with all this health stuff that's going on. So I might just release a couple songs. I'll let it go. I can't wait to perform live though. That's like one of my really big goals. So I'm also kind of trying to like dress everything up and like rest a little bit, but at the same time, like put my all into my day every day. And that's the other thing, like toys are fun and everything, but like I just miss the physicality of having somebody by me. You know, and that's the hard part about being in a small town for me is that, like, I don't really know anybody, you know, and so it's like, I'm just so used to being around all my friends. And I really want a puppy, but I can't have a puppy here at this particular place that I live. I've already named both of my puppies that I want. I already know what kind of puppies they are. <clears throat> I've wanted them for so long, and I'm going to be the best puppy mom ever. I don't know if I talked about that yesterday or not, but I don't know. Ow. Ow, that's weird. I cut open my hand. I was redoing some stairs and pulling the, um, the wooden nails off like the stairs and all the staples and everything and gashed my hand open. And I was like, your hands are important. You should probably be really careful with your hands, right? And it was like, you need to put gloves on. And uh, it's just funny how many things you can accomplish if you just kind of say yes. Like, it's just so confusing sometimes. Like, I feel like my heart is so... My heart's still like in love. But my chest always feels weak. Does that make sense? Where it's like you're just missing from me. And that's how it feels. Like it really does. And I know that I felt this for a really long time. So I don't know what to do with that in real life, except to prepare for something better and that this feeling is never gonna exist again. Cause it's self-inflicted, I feel like. And maybe it's depression. Maybe it's my personality. Maybe it's my workaholic personality that I'm so fucking bored right now with what I'm doing because I want to do animation and I want to do tech and I want to do society and social media and I want to do these really big marketing and advertising campaigns and I just want to do the creative things that I love to do and I'm not 
You know, it's like I don't have the capabilities to do everything. And I'm trying to do everything, but I can't do it without the people in my life helping me. And that's just a real way of saying, like, I love you, Post Malone, so much. And I think you're an incredible human being. And I love that you do what you do for me. And I hope you know how much you mean to everybody around us. Because I wouldn't be getting up in the morning looking at you like that if I didn't know who you really were. And that's the real truth behind everything. And I didn't know this episode was going to take a turn like that. But I got really nervous about posting about Post Malone online with people because people were coming at me sideways. And it was just a really heartfelt experience to not know, like, what Austin's name was from the beginning. Or to know these things that not everybody knows about me. Like, when somebody says Liquid Death, like, I dated a Liquid Death representative. And we had a heart-to-heart -heart one day, and I wanted to be in an open relationship. And I went and I had future fun with someone else. And... That's just how it went. And I don't know the right answers to everyone's problems sometimes. But I do know that I really like who I am right now. And I like being a good person. And I like flashing lights and blinding lights. <laughs> and I like shadows. And I like lamps. I really like lamps. Um, Jack Harlow knows I really like lamps. And I'm really better off saying people's names out loud because I don't want to hide who the people are in my life. Because I hate that. I don't like it. It's not who I am. It's not who I was brought up to be. But it's also really weird to me to say people's last names. It makes me feel artificial. It makes me feel like an alien. And I don't like feeling like an alien all the time. I only like feeling like an alien during Alienware Day. Which means we're like building PCs and like custom Compton stuff. Which would be really cool. I just had another marketing brilliant idea for Comstock and Compton. Dun dun dun! That's the other part. Everyone's like, let's do this. Let's just do this. Let's just make something of ourselves. You know, it doesn't have to be this convoluted or complicated sometimes. And I'm just a normal human being who has really good brains and really pretty eyes and can stick her fingers in her eyeballs and go. Yeah, because that's what I do because I'm an animator. I think like this, you know, I think about people, you know, it's very like. It's very friendly to me to be friends with somebody like JB or TS or something like that, you know, like, but then these other people want to make it seem like it's like, artif like, it's like, you're not being the real one because you don't have like everyday conversations with some people. And I'm like, business back off. Who do you guys think you are? And like, it's just the business. It's just the business. And I'm like, nah, Holmes, you don't know who the business actually suggests here. You don't know who the business actually is here. So we strictly business? That means we have business together. That means we relationships together. That means we do everything together. And I miss my homie quality time together with my boys. I really do. And everyone else that's involved in my life, I fucking miss you after hours. I miss all of you. So if you see any of my friends in LA or Delaware or New York, just tell everybody Angelica misses you and she will be back soon. If you want to contact her, just call her old phone number because it's still the same. <laughs> you can still find me at the same phone number. She'll know who you are. She remembers everybody. <clears throat> and if I don't remember you or <laughs> if I don't remember who you were in a club one night, I apologize. I was probably dangerously and drunk. I was dangerously in love, too. I didn't see anybody but who I wanted to see. And I was like, if it didn't point in that direction and it wasn't right there immediately, I didn't want it. 
I've grown up a lot since then. I've grown up a lot since I got to Michigan. You know, I didn't even want anyone to know because there was, I was just so heartbroken about so many people and so many things that I just couldn't see straight anymore. I had to get away. There are too many things being laced with things and too many people dying, too many bad experiences. I just couldn't be around it anymore. I had to get around the goodness of life, the back roads, you know, dirt roads, corn stalks, old houses, good music, good people. You know what I'm saying? But I need balance in my life. I've always been that way. I've always been one to travel, come home when I need to, chill out, get recalibrated and then go back. So we'll see what the world holds, but that's part of my plans. I do plan on seeing all my friends here very soon. If I do, maybe I'll do a mixtape release and do something in town and everyone gets to book hotels and do something super cool. Um, that'd be dope as fuck. So that's on the radar. Or if somebody wants to do something in LA, let me know. We'll do like an album release party. Um, something like that or Vegas. Vegas would be super cool. I'd love to see my Vegas friends. Um, I now have pen all over my hand. But um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with things. I just want someone to love and take care of me. Ooh, and massage my back when I'm having really hard days. Because that's what today is. I'm so stressed out. And I'm so tired. But here we are. I'm still working through it. Yeehaw! Still making it happen. Yeehaw! Still listening to the Dominator. Yeehaw! Still using the same damn flashing light. Yeehaw, how, how. But I did get a new keyboard, which is dope. I didn't have much time to set it up last night, and I can't get the stand to work. I need a tool for it um, so that it doesn't fluff down. But it's got every instrument on it humanly possible, so that kind of changes the game for me um, as far as creating beats and whatnot. So that'll be fun to see what we come up with from here on out on these next releases. So, and I've got some buddies I can call that I really need to. I'm just without, <clears throat> without my best friend by my side. Cause I had such a bad experience. Once he, once he let me down, it was really hard. It was really hard, but I was really depressed. So can't even be sad about it. LA is the city of a lot of things, but as you can see in the dark, I have dark eyes, but when the light comes back on, they turn to light. They may not turn back on right now, <laughs> and that's okay too, because you know what? It's all in God's timing, and I trust that, and I believe that, but I'm tired of suffering. And that's the truth. So I write a lot. I love to freestyle, though, more than anything. That's really my MO, is I, I like to freestyle with things. I like to make sounds out of nothing. I like to make beats out of nothing. I like to mix. I'm okay, I'm okay at mastering. I really want, like, a really big mastering suite to, like, really mess with levels and stuff like that. It's something I need to get, get back into um, and really get in a studio that does that so I don't know, it'll get better it always gets better you just got to stay focused on the positive and not the negative stay focused on the good and one door closes God closed that door for a reason and let that motherfucker go that's all I'm gonna say let those doors close and pray for the right doors to open pray for the right people to walk into your life pray for the right people because they're gonna feel right they're gonna feel easy and that's really what I want to say. Nothing in life is easy, except some things are. Like making a Hot Pocket. But motherfucker, it's never easy to make a Hot Pocket to the right temperature. So just remember that. All right. I would sit here and talk to you for the rest of the night, but this video will never upload if I don't get off of the internet right now. So, ah, oh, Mr. Right Guy. I love this song. Oh. 
So another fun tip, if you were not able to add comments before on the Scar XR topic, um, but now they merged all the channels, so it's Scar XR and Scarlet Red. Um, so you guys, if you want to, you can actually start putting comments on my music videos um, that are up, which is super cool. I was wondering if it would come on when I smile. No. Nope. That's fine. I can't wait to perform these live. But anyways, guys. Alright, I'll check you on the flip side. If you need anything, message me. If you're smart and you got my number, you can WhatsApp me. Um... It's one of the easiest ways to get in contact with me. Um, I don't do Telegram at the moment. Not a big fan, unless you're certain people. Um, then you can Telegram me. But if you have my phone number, you can WhatsApp me. Um, WhatsApp, sorry, WhatsApp me. Um, cause sometimes I don't get text messages because of the signal here. So I love you guys, and I'll check you on the flip side. And if you need me, you know where to find me. Check you later. I love you. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. Good night.